So we've got all our components laid out so we know what they are. We'll slide those out of the way for now. Here's our list of the components. Move that out of the way. And then we have the schematic. So it's really important, since you can read a schematic, that you look at this as you're building and make sure you understand what's going on. Um, often they change colors of wires and different things with these kits. So you need to make sure that you're looking at what's on the schematic and making sure that you're building to that. Or if you have any questions about where something goes, you should be able to refer to the schematic and figure it out. So I'm going to set that off where you can't see it, um, just because I don't have room for everything in the, where I'm building this. But I'm having it where I can see it in case I have questions, and you should definitely do that as you're building. So the next thing to do is to take the printed circuit boards off the microphone. And this might be one of the most difficult parts. Um, most likely your screwdrivers in your toolkits are going to be too big for this, but we have a precision set in the lab that you can use. So just try and do it carefully so you don't strip the screws. Um, and you want to make sure you're pushing down with a fair amount of force as you turn it the first time. Once it's loosened, it's not so bad. But when you first turn it, if you don't push hard enough, you'll strip the screw out. And I'm going to put those on that tape too, because it's a great place to hold them so you don't lose them. And then once the PC board's off, I'm going to put those screws back in the holes on the microphone. Because even on this real sticky tape, um, it's easy for them to fall off. And they are very difficult to find to replace. Um, if you lose them, there's a hobby shop in town that may have some replacements, but it's not an easy thing to find because they're so tiny. So you should be extra careful that you don't lose these screws. You can make sure you press down when you unscrew it so that you don't strip them. Putting the screws back. So that's your mic housing with the capsule, switches for pad, and high-pass filter. And also your transformer's inside of here, and you have wires here that go both to the transformer and to the XLR. So we'll get to those later. So we've got our two printed circuit boards, and we'll start soldering. So I'm turning on my soldering iron which is out of view, but you'll see it as I pull it in. Now you need something to hold your printed circuit board while you're soldering. So in the lab we have vices for that, and I have a similar one here. And the ones in the lab, the suction cups don't work anymore very well anymore. This one does have working suction cups, so I'm going to suction it down to the bench. It just makes it easier to work on. And then that'll give me a way to hold the peanut circuit board while I'm soldering. <coughs> I won't do that for all of them, but for some of the components, I'll need to clamp it in there. To start with, I'm going to do some that I don't need that, though. And I like to start with the resistors because they are the lowest physically to the board, and I find it easier to do the smallest ones first, the shortest ones, and then go to the tallest. So I'm just randomly picking up one of the two PCs, printed circuit boards. This one has fewer components, so I'll start with that one. First resistor is R18, so I'll grab that. And bend the leads just to the sides of the resistor. Put it in place. 
So I'm going to go ahead and bend all of those resistors and put them back in their spots. So here's 17. So I'm just making it so that everything's sort of set up almost assembly line so it's ready to go when I'm ready to do the next step. The more you can do this, the easier you're making it on yourself to make sure that you're just focusing on, you know, soldering the components in and putting them in the right place. You don't have to worry about bending them and all the other things in that step when you have to solder. So the things that can make this project go well or not, the things that will make your microphone work at the end or not, are following directions, so making sure all the components are in the right place, and soldering very neatly and very carefully. So, got those all bent now, so I'll put R17 in. And what's nice about this, since I've got them laid out, is it's just now a matter of taking them and putting them on the board. Okay, so they're all in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to solder from the other side, so I'm going to turn this printed circuit board over. Um, when I do that, if I'm not careful, they'll all start to fall out. So I have this other printed circuit board. So in this case, I'll hold that against and turn it over. Um, you can also use something else, any sort of um, piece of cardboard or anything that allow you to do this without them moving. And then once it's down on the table, you can pull that out. And then they're just all sitting there. Now I'm going to try and zoom in so you can get a better shot of the soldering. Let's see how this goes. Now it's just a matter of soldering. Um, just to make sure you see, every time I bring the soldering iron out, pull it out to do something, I do two, I do a quick wipe on both sides. Um, the labs have sponges. I have a little metal piece because it doesn't have to be wetted. But same thing with the sponges. Just wipe it once on each side on the sponge. Now we're just going to solder. Remember, what's really important is that you're heating both the printed circuit board, the silver part of that, and the lead of the component. If they're not both hot, you'll get a bad solder. Questions about your solders, let me know. So one of these is not great. So this one, I take that back. This one's not great. See how the solder is kind of going up the, the lead? It, it just doesn't look as nicely shaped. It should look very much like a Hershey's Kiss. So the problem always with this, when you have a bad solder, is that you haven't heated it enough. Either gotten both things hot or gotten them hot enough. So I'm not going to, leaving the solder on the bench, I'm not touching it not adding any solder. Just hold your iron on, make sure you're touching both the board and the component. Give it a time to melt, pull your iron off. A little bit of solder sticking up the top, but that's fine. Now we have a good solder. Uh, again, if you have questions about your solders, let me know. Ideally, well, not ideally, I want you to sh do two components and then show me what you've done before you do any more. So 
Um, if you wanted to, you could do all of these resistors, but it's best if you show me as soon as possible so I catch any mistakes you're making before you make it 100 times. So now that those are all soldered and I'm happy with the solders, I'm now going to cut these leads off. A lot of people wait to cut the leads when they're doing their first couple of projects, thinking, well, if I mess up, I want to have, I don't want to cut the leads. But they're going to get in the way for everything else you're going to do, so cut them now. These are your cutters. They're called side cuts or dikes. I don't know why they're called that. Um, so there's a flat side. You want to cut just above where the solder is. So don't cut so far down that you're cutting into the solder. Just cut just above it. And just cut all those off. If you get them nice and right to the top of the solder, you'll enjoy it more because it won't poke you as you're touching the printed circuit board. Otherwise, we just want to cut them off so they don't short to anything else as we're working on it. So there we go. Resistor is done on the first printed circuit board. So now we'll go ahead and finish this board. So let's do the capacitors. We can either do the capacitors or the inductors next. The capacitors are going to be taller than the inductors, so let's do the inductors. And there are two inductors. And bend them about like you did the resistors, but maybe not quite tight to the edge because they need to be a little bit bigger than that. If you bend them the wrong size and re-bend them as you push them down into the board, that's fine. It won't hurt anything. So these look different from the inductors we used in lab, mostly just because they're designed to handle a lot less current. Um, but inside of there is a coil of wire, just like you expect to see with an inductor. Sorry, some of that went off camera. But So I got my two inductors in. I'll go ahead and solder those. And cut off the leads. And then my capacitors. So C12, 13, 14. So 11, 10, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So when we look at those, so 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So they're about all the same size. 10, 11 are a little bit smaller. So I'll do those first. This was 10. Now, some capacitors are polarized. These that we're putting in now are not, so we don't have to worry about those. But when we get up to 12, 13, 14, those are polarized, so we need to watch out for that. So, now we go to 12, 13, 14. Here's C12. So just like other capacitors, the longer lead is the positive, and there are some pluses on the capacitor itself that show you that. And then on the printed circuit board, the larger of the two lines is the positive. So in this case, it looks like a rectangle, and the other side is just a, a regular line. So the positive goes toward the rectangle side. The open rectangle, I guess I should say. Oh, and this is C12. Well, and so this circuit board actually says R12 next to that capacitor, but it is C12. Let's put that in. 13. C13. And C14. Again, the longer lead goes in toward the open rectangle. There. Now we'll solder those five capacitors.
Now, I mentioned the vise earlier. These capacitors don't really fall out, so this would be a good time to use that if you want. Might make it a little easier. Open it up. So then this circuit board is done. Just cut off the rest of those leads. And these are actually a good size, so you can in most cases do two leads. Both leads from a component at the same time. If you're doing these in the lab, notice I'm putting my finger over it. I, I do that out of habit, even though there aren't any, there's nobody else in the room. It just keeps those from flying off and hitting somebody in the eye or well, anywhere really. Because um, those are spiky pieces of metal, so they don't feel too good. So one piece of board down.